Hello everybody, it's wonderful to see you. To celebrate my recent milestone of reaching 1000 subscribers, I shall be answering the questions you asked me last week here on YouTube and over on Instagram. But first, it's time for a little refreshment. I invite you to join me as I make myself a cocktail. Orange fizz a la Melina. Here's the recipe in case you'd like to try. Mix together ice, the juice of half an orange and the juice of a quarter of a lemon. Then add one part of dry gin. What makes this drink a la Melina is the fact that I only put in very little because I actually dislike the taste of gin. Then I get to shaking it all together. Now I strain it into a chilled cocktail glass and fill the other half with soda water or sparkling water as I've always called it. And voila! Orange fizz a la Melina. And here we are. Cheers. Ooh, I like it. Come on, Kathleen, come on. Here, let's it's very delicious. I was thinking I might garnish it with something, perhaps an orange or a lemon slice, but then I thought, well, I'm going to drink it now anyway, so why bother? Let's begin! I've written all my questions down in this little book. The first one is, what made you start wearing vintage? Well, I became fascinated by old Hollywood cinema when I was 15 years old, and I just loved the way all the actresses looked. They were all so sophisticated and glamorous, and I was thinking, I want to look like that. And I like to think, now I do. Question number two, do you only wear true vintage or dabble in reproduction too? So, fun fact, probably only about 50% of my wardrobe is actually true vintage. The other half is either items I've sewn myself or garments that look like they're vintage, but they're actually modern clothes bought secondhand. For example, something like this could be vintage, but it's not. I just bought it at the op shop. In my day-to-day -day at home life, I usually tend to wear the vintage style modern clothing, Firstly, because I don't have to worry about the wear and tear and the true vintage clothing deteriorating. And also because I do live in the countryside and I have a very active dog and I spend a lot of time around horses. So I'd rather not wear my true vintage clothes for that. To be honest, I don't really buy anything from vintage reproduction brands except for what Katie did for my stockings. Mostly because I can't afford it. 3. What orchestra would you want to sing in? My absolute favourite big band is Charlie Barnett and his orchestra, so if I could live my dream and travel back in time to be a big band singer for a while in the 1940s, it would definitely be with him. Although Charlie Barnett's orchestra did have quite the reputation for partying, so I'm not sure I'd quite fit in there. My second choice would be Tommy Dorsey and his orchestra. As you know, well, as you might know, in the 1940s their main boy singer was Frank Sinatra, so I would have absolutely loved to sing with him, despite him probably outshining me. And my third choice would be Harry James, because I just love his music. Question number four. What kinds of films would you want to star in? Ooh, I love this question. Definitely musicals, black and white or technicolor, I don't mind. And also screwball comedies, because I love the genre. Would you consider doing a week in the life of a Hollywood starlet video? Possibly including some form of radio interview. Of course, I would love it. The 1940s starlet videos are actually my favorite kind of videos to make, so I know I'd have a lot of fun with that one. By the way, everybody, I'm always open to video ideas, so if you have any requests that you'd like me to do, then feel free to tell me in the comments or message me on Instagram. What studio would you want to be signed to? Ideally, I would want to freelance because the studio system back then was very deeply flawed and very oppressive to its stars. But if I had to pick one, then it would probably be MGM because they had a huge roster of stars and therefore successful films and big, big budgets. And 
I think that would be quite useful. But yes, if I could pick anything, then freelancing for sure. How is Ice doing? Well, why don't we ask her? Icy! Hello, Icy! My queen! Hello! How are you doing, Icy? She is sleepy. Don't you, baby girl? Hmm? Oh, I love you. If you chose a different era to dress in, what would it be? The 1930s. I'd say it's my second favorite era for fashion next to the 40s because I love the slim lines of the era, very graceful and glamorous looking. And the films from the era are very good too. And the music. How do you balance vintage things and modern things at the same time? Uh, to be honest, I don't really know. I mean, I wouldn't say... Hmm. Well, I mean, I look very vintage. I do my hair every day and I dress like it's the 1940s every day, but my lifestyle in itself, I wouldn't really consider it being really vintage because, I mean, I watch old movies on my laptop. I listen to old music via Spotify. So <laughs> basically, <laughs> I am a bit of a fraud. And, well, having a YouTube channel is probably the most un-1940s thing I can even think of, so I don't know. I'm not sure how to answer that question, I'm sorry. If I open a historically accurate, high-quality clothing boutique, would it be possible for you to be one of my customers? Sure thing, I would love it. I really like supporting small businesses and I love vintage fashion, so of course. Hi there folks, unfortunately I've started having one of my vertigo attacks so I'm going to have to stop filming for now and continue on another day when I'm feeling better. See you then. Hiya folks, I'm back after a couple of days feeling better with a sparkling water this time because I have a dress rehearsal this afternoon. Let's continue with the questions. Just as good as a cocktail. What are some of your favorite old Hollywood movies? I've actually made a list because I know that I wouldn't be able to remember them all off the top of my head. So here are my top 10 that I'm going to read out. On the Town, oh, and it's in no particular order except number one, On the Town, my absolute favorite movie. So, On the Town, The Awful Truth, Gold Diggers of 1933, Cover Girl, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Easy Living, The Lady Eve, The Philadelphia Story, The Women, and Thrill of a Romance. And there's so many other old Hollywood movies that I enjoy too, but those are the ones that are my favorites, I would say. So, yes. Next up, what are some modern movies and TV shows you like? I actually can't think of any movies. Obviously, I don't just watch films from the 30s and 40s, but I can't really think of anything that particularly stands out to me. As for TV shows, I know it's technically not modern because it came out in the 90s, but a television show I really enjoy is The X-Files, which, looking at me, you might not expect, but I find that sort of thing very interesting. First vintage piece. Now, there are two pieces I would consider my first, because I can't actually remember which one came before the other, but I will show you. These shoes from the 1940s, they are just divine. They are also very dusty, because it's spring here and I usually only wear them in autumn and winter, but they are so gorgeous. and. I didn't actually know they were from the 40s when I saw them in a charity shop. I just really needed shoes for an event, so I'm like, well, these fit, so I'm buying them and they're still my favorite shoes to this day. And this gorgeous pink sweater, which I believe is from the 1950s. 
And to this day, it's also still one of my favorite vintage pieces. And that was... Yeah, six years ago. Which is ages and ages ago. So, I'm very happy to still have these pieces. Favorite hairstyle? It's between the half poodle and the hairstyle I had in the first portion of this video, which is sort of like a four half bang. Kind of like this, but better executed. Although realistically, the hairstyle I tend to wear the most often is just loose waves with a few hair combs to keep my hair out of my face. What's your favorite outfit? Hmm. It's probably between the outfit I wore on my birthday, the dress of which I sewed myself, and the rest is all true vintage, and this brown and white ensemble from last summer, which I adore. Honorable mention are this cocktail dress and this look from last year. Do you have any siblings? If so, how many? Yes, indeed I do. I have an older brother, who you can see in some of my videos, and a little sister. Do you speak any languages other than English? Ja, ich spreche auch Deutsch. English is actually my second language. I started off speaking German because I lived in Germany for the first eight years of my life and I'm still pretty fluent in it. Do you have any vintage friends? If not, do you wish to have a friend who shares the same interest as you? Yes, I do actually have a couple of wonderful vintage friends, although I say you can never have too many, so you're more than welcome to write me and we can become friends. The only problem is that my vintage friends are scattered all around the world and that's really awful because I'd love to have more meetups. The vintage community in New Zealand is quite tiny and that's a bit of a shame. Top 5 favorite vintage songs and artists. artists. <laughs> Too darn many. In terms of songs, I couldn't possibly tell you because it changes all the time and like I said, there's just too many. But I will tell you that my favorite song of all time would be Charlie Barnett's Skyliner. If you haven't heard that, I definitely recommend that you do. As for artists, my top five would be, just off the top of my head, don't quote me on this later, Frank Sinatra, Helen Forrest, Harry James, Charlie Barnett, um, and I'd say B. Wayne. And there's so many more, like Francis Langford, The Pied Pipers, Cab Calloway, but <laughs> then that's more than five, so. Next up, I have wanted to get into vintage dress for a while, but I don't know where to start. Do you have any general tips for beginners? I wouldn't call myself much of an expert, but there were a couple of things that helped me out when I started to be interested in vintage. First off, it can be very helpful to find out what specific era or style you're interested in. For example, there are so many different kinds of vintage fashion, like the 30s and the 50s, completely different. I know when I was interested in vintage first, I liked the 50s the most, but now I find that my favorite era is the early 1940s and I have quite a glamorous and sophisticated style. A good idea while you're still experimenting with which era or style you like is instead of buying something true vintage for a huge amount of money online, you can go to a charity or a second hand shop and look for items that have a vintage look but are actually modern second hand clothes. I have quite a lot like that and sometimes you can't even tell the difference. That can save you a lot of money while you're getting started. And if it turns out that you don't even want to dress in that style or vintage was just a little phase for you, then you didn't lose a lot of money. Another thing is it can be quite daunting to go into public dressed head to toe in true vintage. So something that helped me out was starting small. For example, having quite a toned down look but just adding one vintage item, like a skirt or shoes or a handbag, and also hairstyles. You wouldn't believe how much of a difference an authentic vintage hairdo makes. It can really make your outfit, in my opinion. I don't know if any of that makes sense, so I'm very sorry. I'm just rambling off the top of my head. I usually script my videos, so this is 
very new and different for me. As for fashion inspiration, what inspires me the most is watching movies from the 1930s, 1940s and the 1950s, so the golden age of cinema. I've always found it very useful in inspiring the way I dress and it's pretty much the blueprint of what I want to look like. So that helped me when I was getting into vintage and it's still helping me now when I feel a bit like I don't know what to wear. I'll always just put on an old movie and then I'll get inspired. Doesn't help that I have an addiction to watching old movies too. <laughs> and finally, have fun and be confident. At the end of the day, it's all just clothes. When or if you go into public wearing vintage clothes, what is the general reaction from the public? Yes indeed, it's not just for the videos, I do go out in public dressed like this. Sometimes more extravagant than other times. I would say that the public reacts mostly positive to the way I dress. I think the only negative reactions I've ever gotten was just those kind of stares. <laughs> One of my favorite things about dressing vintage in public is that it's a great conversation starter. I've had so many people come up to me and compliment my outfit and especially older people walking up to me and talking about how much it means to them because it reminds them of their youth or about the movies that they grew up watching. Those interactions mean a lot to me because I'm very flattered that they would come over and talk to me and that I bring back so many nice memories for them. So all in all, mostly very positive reactions and a lot of meaningful conversations. I do have to say it's a lot of unwarranted attention because I do stick out and sometimes for instance, if I just want to get the grocery shopping done, it can be quite annoying, especially when I'm not feeling so great and people are staring at me. But at the end of the day, it is my choice to dress like that and I know it makes me stick out, so it does come with the territory, unfortunately. Oh, and I hate it when people take pictures of me without asking. And our last question of today is, when did you start becoming interested in vintage style? That was six years ago in 2016 when I was 15 years old. My love for vintage actually began with old music. And that started when we would always listen to an old music station on the radio when we were in the car. And one day Frank Sinatra comes on the radio and I believe the song was Come Fly With Me and as they say, the rest is history. Old music got me into watching old movies and that in turn sparked my love for vintage fashion. And here we are. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you for asking these questions because otherwise I couldn't have made this video. I also want to say another huge thank you for 1000 subscribers here on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. I hope I see you in my next video. Bye for now. Oh, if you're still watching up to this point, I have a little secret to tell you. He's been lying next to me the entire time I've been filming. You good boy. Well, excuse me. I love it. She's hungry, it's dinner time. <laughs>